Hey everybody, and welcome back to Now Loading Esports. Today we've got a scrim between Drexel's Team 2, uh, unfortunately labeled as Team 5, and Phoenix Claw. My name is Big Rick. I'm joined here today by Sponti, who may or may not be able to speak right now, but eventually he'll be around. I'll be expecting a pretty tight game here, from what I've been told. Uh, this is a scrim around the 3k level, but we've got some off-rolling going on by Drexel's Team 2 at least that I'm aware of. We're going to be seeing Barry on main tank, who is yellow on this uh, on this account. I don't know why Barry chose that, but we'll see Barry on the main tanks. Or CB on the main tank, I'm sorry. I see they are missing uh, Zaya, their usual main tank, so we're going to get to see some of that today. I'm not sure about the accounts of any of the other members of Phoenix Claw here, Uh, but once the games start, we will quickly see what they tend to lean towards. Uh, Li Zhang, I'm a big fan of Li Zhang to uh, sort of show how the scrim will go in the future. I think King of the Hill is a very good map for showing uh, the raw talent of teams and also what their hero pool options are. Uh, Sponti is now here. Hello, Sponti. Hey, Rick. Sorry, I am uh, fashionably late today, but I do have to agree with you what I heard about the King of the Hill maps. I'm very excited for Lee Jung being the first map today. Absolutely. We will eventually get into these games. They are currently sending the map pool over so that they can uh, play maps that won't be useless for these teams in the future. <laughs> Oasis seems to be the first map we're going into, and here we go. Welcome. Wait, we didn't get to see any Oasis last Drexel sprint, so this will be interesting to see which composition they play on this map. Yeah, I'm not sure how they play these Oasis maps, so I am also uh, curious to see what they'll whip out. This map, a lot of the time you'll see a lot of the ball dive, sometimes a monkey if teams aren't too experienced on the ball. Uh, you can play the Brawl on this map, but I uh, can't say I'd recommend it. Double Shield not really too often played here, at least in my experience. Uh, it sort of just gets run over by Ball and other forms of dive too easily, at least in this scenario. I'm going to have to agree with the uh, your hot take on Rush. It's like that this is what both teams are going to be doing. Hmm? Eventually. One team opting uh, opting for a doom fist though, so, and we see Drexel is going to make some swaps right before the match starts. Uh, Reaper in May. Pretty uh, relatively standard brawl. You might want to swap one of those for a creep, but uh, again with the off rolls, you might want to just keep some comfort going. We are definitely going to be seeing that brawl mirror. Very interesting. How would neither team TPing out of spawn? You hate to see it. Teams opted to go into the hallways and meet up top. I agree with their uh, pathing. Be taking place here, May immediately getting pushed oh right goodness. off the map. Very unfortunate. The immortality comes out, Diva gets picked, and this fight's looking pretty chalk for Drexel. Wow, Doomfist absolutely pummeling through uh, Drexel Team 5 here. You can see uh, Drexel Reinhardt, I believe that's Barry, right? Yep, that is got... in fact Barry on the wrong account. <laughs> he got absolutely bullet sponge there by the Doomfist punch and then this team following up on it. Couldn't really get a push going with that. I am a fan of the uh, Cassidy swap here from Physics. I think that's a smart one. Uh, they're looking to path sort of in that hallway. It can be tough though with that Doomfist lurking around, but I still think that's their best option. Uh, the other team running Zarya, hopefully they can find a way to exploit that slight weakness in their composition. Yeah, their damage did so much just in that first initiation, and now they have almost both DPS ults and both tank ults. Ooh, the Doomfist feeding it, and that is an unfortunate side effect of playing Doomfist, but he's already got his ultimate online, so... Not a whole lot of punishment that Drexel can really do here. Chris is going to be a pick, but Zumi unfortunately falling into that Doofus Punch, and it's just wrapped from there. Just wonderful cleanup from the side of Phoenix Claw. Hey, 
Honestly, they are running that Ana instead of the Baptiste. No immortality uh -huh. for them. They should be able to just sort of roll them over as long as they can manage to get there. But the Doomfist is doing an excellent job of disrupting uh, their movement, their flow. Uh, you yeah. really want to see that May utilized a little bit more. Yeah, halfway scenario. through this first point, where Drexel is just now coming online with some ultimates, let's hope they use them well. You draft North and Zarya, lift him up. That Maywall not going to do a whole lot. It's just another cleanup, but a huge shatter oh, comes huge in from shatter. Barry. Very, very nice. We're looking at a winnable game here for Drexel. A few unfortunate missed shots on the side of Beninator. What supports on the Zarya, side of Drexel, though? Himself. It's looking skeletal here. It's definitely very winnable for Drexel here. Oh, Rack got unfortunately getting picked off. A huge flash. Cassidy, <laughs> power in that flashbang and raging main tanks everywhere. Oh, oh my goodness. no. And the huge slam coming in from Crits. Probably going to seal the deal on this one. Lunar does manage to get a pick onto Cassidy, but it's probably not going to mean too much. Drexel decisively losing his first map here. That was a very good fight in the hall here, but it, in the end it came down to uh, which team had their supports. Up, which would be on the opposition. Right, Phoenix Claw did very well to stay alive in all those scenarios. Got a Rhyme Shatter here that we can look at. A very nice Rhyme Shatter. Almost managed to turn the fight here, Barry. Oh my goodness. Uh, unfortunately, not sealing the deal quite as much as you'd like, but really well played. Pretty. Really nice Shatter. It, was, it certainly was pretty. Very juicy Shatter. Oh, here we go. We are on the uh, map with the hole in it. I'm blanking on the name right now. <laughs> <laughs> University. Yes, that's right. That's, the, uh, this is the what, uh, everybody knows it as the hole. The hole is the classic. This is, yeah, this is more, of more of a rush map here. Map, but... Yeah. <laughs> Barry may be opting for the hog instead, not trusting the sports to get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's gonna go on any flanks? Oh, I would love to see a little berry flank on the on the hog here. He's gotta keep it. All right, so we're going to see some classic rush from uh, Phoenix Claw here and a uh, little yeah, no mix and match here from Drexel. But they're still on the point quicker. Let's see on the berry cam here if he can get a good opening hook and a pick to engage this rush comp. He hooks a Cassidy and he does get the kill with okay, the help yeah, of Lunar. Gonna take a little bit of a nap here, but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter that much. If I were Phoenix Claw, I would be rushing on them immediately once I see them. Their comp is not ideal. That was a very well placed bubble by Magic Turtle on the side of Huge Phoenix wall. Claw. And now the tanks are getting frozen by this wall that's been blocked up here, but Barry hooks the May and can't get the kill. Exactly what I want to see from Phoenix Claw there. That May wall was crucial in winning the Nutty fight. A few cleanup kills hopefully come in for the side of Phoenix Claw here. Yeah, there's one. Barry with 100% hook accuracy, I believe, here, but only one kill. <laughs> Gonna have to get a little bit more team follow up, I guess, on his hooks. You know, if I were uh, Drexel here, I might opt for a little bit of a swap on a few heroes here. Now that we see that there's no Doomfist, we, I guess we're going to keep the rally here, which is a smart move. Uh, but we're gonna need to walk in with it quick and hopefully not get picked off immediately. Again, if I were on the side of Phoenix Claw, I would be rushing right now. And there yeah. it is, huge slam. Barry does get the pick onto their main support, but Phoenix Claw has popped two ults, and I think that's gonna be it for this fight for Drexel. Very well done. Aerosmith really putting in work here. This May uh, seeming to be just as powerful as his Doomfist from last map. We've got a lot of ultimates online. We've got a freeze from Aerosmith. We've got an Ana ultimate here. We've got the High Noon, the Beat. But we've also got a few ultimates on the side of Drexel as well, so... Uh, Expecting to see the Blizzard here on the fight. Engage. Especially now with this rally from Zinni. Here comes the High Noon. High Noon only want to get one. Still want to fight for Drexel. Immortality comes out. Physics managed to get a pick on crits. Rackgun's getting it's Zarya. They have fight. no tanks. And a massive pick for Barry onto that Ana is going to seal the deal. Oh no, you hate to see it. The 1v6 beat coming in from Sorry. That was quite a sorry beat. I feel beat. sorry for his team for using that beat on the last <laughs> at the end of the fight. Very well done by Barry. 
not getting much value out of the whole hog as one would expect, but the damage got them real low and he could finish them off with his combos. Both DPS ults on the way for Drexel's side and a Mayfree still online for Phoenix and there it is. Uh, thrown in a rather inconsequential spot, but they're still going to manage to clean up this fight anyway. Uh, Drexel's going to need to stall for as long as they can here and then swap to some fast heroes. Oh my a massive goodness. bomb Ratka from Ratka and actually bomb. turns this fight. That, that is fight incredible. was looking a thousand percent lost, but that triple kill just completely wiped the floor and completely turned this situation for them. That was beautiful. Well done, Ratgun. Barry being a little sneaky piggy here. Aww. <laughs> just Roundy wraps Ratka's back to the second point. Chance. Now Physics has his Death Blossom and Zumi has her window here coming up. So hopefully you see that window early. There it goes. Physics teleports to the back line with his Death Blossom. Oh, but he gets slapped, but it does incredible amounts of damage. Hanyu going to come now, out, but really Rackon blocking it. Not going to get anything wow. except for the D.Va. Well done. Get on Rackon, really, really holding the team here. Amazing. Why that whole shenanigans is going on up there with the Cassidy physics was. Sh <laughs> Shooting through the window is a Reaper, and he managed to get three, which is wild for the character that he's playing. Uh, yeah. You don't often see that combo. A huge grab coming out from the side of Phoenix. They're going to have the Immortality Field and the Anti-Nade coming in to splash them, but not going to do much. The whole hog managed to keep them away for a little bit. Oh, and the, the Nano Rhino unfortunately falls right in the hole. That Zarya is looking quite dead. Managed to get out alive. Very lucky. This fight is looking good for Drexel here. They pop the Rally and get all this extra armor. Still a very winnable fight for either side, but time goes on and it looks like Drexel is just going to wrap this one up. I'm really playing to the strengths with that hog. That was very, an amazing uh, beat from Ratgun. Really nice beat from Ratgun. Fight goes on, they're just going to have to clean up this Reinhardt. Lucio on the way, might get the touch. There it is, the beat, but Barry saying no, do not touch wow. my point. 1-1. One, one. I have to say... That was very well played by Drexel. Maybe a little lucky from that D.Va bomb, but Ratgun did hold that team together. Yeah, it was really well executed. With their play. Ready for battle. We're gonna take a look at that D.Va bomb coming in on the replay here. Here it is. Very nice. It just looks like their team had decided to not hide behind their Reinhardt with shield. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it just gets hectic and you don't think about it. All right. It happens. <laughs> it does happen. Ooh, I am liking Phoenix Claw's composition that they're swapping to here. I'm also a fan, something that we do occasionally, maybe with an alteration or two. Uh, we're going to see Barry hitting the monkey here with the Doom Reaper. I don't know. Uh, Doom Genji. Mayhaps. Yeah, I guess, I guess they're we'll not see. expecting the Faro coming out there. That Faro might be a problem. Uh, once these engages start with a Doom and Genji on the side, Drex. Knowing, uh, knowing their fearless Team One leader, I'd be amazed if they couldn't uh, predict a Fara coming in on this map. They are gonna run with though. They are running with Doom Genji, a surprising combination, but uh, uh, hopefully one that they are able to actually do things on, which most people struggle with. Phoenix already getting the immediate advantage by taking that high ground first, but we're going to see how well they can respond. Not a whole lot they could do about that far. Uh, Phoenix's win condition here really is just to stay alive and let the far do some work. As I say, that record immediately out of mech here. It'll be a harder fight, but the ball, Magic Turtle going down. Hey, ben does find the main tank though. He's low, but he does slip away with the kill. Beninator gonna try and take the point alone, and the monkey trying to contest to make sure that doesn't happen. And getting picked off because of it. Goodbye, Beninator, but this is still a very turnable fight for either side. If I had to guess, I'd give it to the side of Phoenix just because of the presence of that far and the lack of ability to deal with it. But we will certainly see. Crits getting taken down immediately by physics of Pulse Bomb coming on the side of Kenyon, not going to catch anybody. Beninator getting the pick on Kenya on his Doomfist. And a barrage that only is going to get one. Drexel managing to turn this fight for them. Uh, something I did not expect at all. 
I am gonna have really to well I didn't expect it at all. They they got a barrage out and they capped the point at the same time. Which is great for them. I still do like the far on the side of uh, Phoenix. I don't think that's the problem that they need to swap. Kenyat opting for the Cassidy. Not necessarily something I agree with, but it does get value immediately getting that pick on the physics. Sorry, gonna get a little zappy zap before escaping to that high ground there far. Detonator going to be popping his ultimate, escaping the danger. Try and get some value out of it. I'm going to try and hit the Ana, but no avail. He's just going to get it tossed around entirely. But Magic Turtle managed to pick both supports with his nines. Line. Well done. Venus Claw going to take this point. Got to get out or die right now. Reset. An answer to that Farah would be huge. So that is just going to constantly pepper them with damage. Yeah, I'm curious if they're holding this Nano here. Well, I was curious, thinking they might have done Nano Monkey, but it looks like they're going to do Nano... Well, <laughs> not Nano Blade anymore. Everything keeps <laughs> getting a turn for its own here, but... A lot of swaps coming in from Drexel. Not necessarily ones I agree with, but... Uh, they're looking for an answer. That's exactly what they're doing. I don't... Uh, I don't know how they want to opt to do this. It's kind of hard to walk anywhere with this sort of composition you got going on. Barrage and the Nano Monkey both going to be coming in. <laughs> Very cooking the fire out of the sky, but not managed to pick her off. This is just looking like a little bit of a wrap for, uh, for Drexel here if they stick on this kind of composition. Well, still has two, possibly three fights in them if they can make this quick. I mean, they do have ultimates online. Phoenix Claw Absolutely. only having High Noon and Valkyrie, which we all know how bad of Ultimate High Noon is. And not a whole lot of utility coming in from that pick. I'm looking for a, sort of a rally to walk in, maybe a Nano on a Soldier to try and take care of that Pharmacy quickly. You or can see the Roadhog here is really that, looking uh, for, really looking for the uh, the Far Mercy with his hook, but... Wow, Venator managed to get a huge pick on the ball immediately. I have to assume that it took place by the car side. So you get an anti the Kenyon. Very well done, and the Nano goes right onto the piggy. Hopefully he does a little bit of work with it. Nice hook. Well, well done, cancel, but he does get picked off for it. That is unfortunate. Axel does turn the Drexel point, does however, turn though. The point. Wow. I think if they're going to want to keep this point here, they're going to have to get that far out of the sky, because now they're starting to lose uh, teammates here. Still no use of Rally, that's an ultimate you really want to see coming out as fast as possible if you can do it. The Barrage coming out to clean this fight out, this is unfortunately looking like a lost map from Drexel yeah. here, unless they get a massive recontest. Oh, and there's the opener! Barry managed to pick off M16 Bloodbath, they're on a... But no touch coming in from Beninator. Beninator be is so close, but I think he messed up his slam due to that uh, concussive blast, I'm not sure. Maybe getting a little too overzealous could have touched at 98 instead of 99. Ready for at 97. Uh, going to be a little bit of a entertaining pick here from uh, the Doomfist, as you can see, and then the kill feed rat there. Uh, <laughs> punching him right into the cars. There you go. <laughs> punching him right into the traffic. Uh, something you never want to see is your hamster walk into the middle of the road. It's always humorous when uh, someone dies to the cars on Oasis, though. Usually have oh, yeah. a, kind of a creative rotate. Yeah, uh, I'm no stranger to creative rotates myself. Opening up on Havana next for this map. Uh, maybe a little bit less of an entertaining one than Oasis here. Uh, mm -hmm. Double shield usually being the composition that most opt for. Also another map we didn't get to see Drexel uh, scrim in their last Sunday. Is that right? I don't, uh, I don't remember these as well as you do, I guess. <laughs> I just, I just like to see them play all the maps in the pool just so I can get a, uh, good knowledge base on what they like to play on these maps. And obviously here, double shield. Getting ready for Havana. Got another little Doomfist clip here. Uh, things to make supports cry. Nice little compilation. Good murder on the honor there. Well done. Ben did well on the Doomfist on 
any map you played him on that uh, on Oasis, Oasis there, but it did seem they struggled with the Farah a lot. That's sort of the answer we're looking for. Unfortunately, they seem to, they swapped their nano blade and uh, a monkey to sort of deal with it when it's Greetings. not really the roles you're looking for mm -hmm. uh, to try and counter that Farah. You really want to see the Diva was a good option. Maybe just a medium to long range hit scan to deal with the Fara and some, or some smarter pathing. Keeping that nano blade is a huge advantage. The Diva alone can really mitigate a lot of the value that Fara does. Fara does uh, opting to whip out the the Roadhog here. I'm a fan. I think Hog makes things a little more interesting on Havana, that's for sure. Pinyot getting that immediate pick on a Beninator. Rez going to come in, still making this a 6v6 fight. Ratgun getting fooled, not going to die for it, fortunately. I am still in awe about how much Roadhog does to shields. He absolutely destroys shields with his right click at a certain range. Absolutely, that 150 damage per shot really puts in work now in this uh, low shield era. He's certainly giving them a run for their money. He looks like he's kind of running free here. Maybe they need to push in on him and get a kill here. I'm really liking the look of Barry's Orisa, to be honest. The pools are actually pretty decent here. Look at that. Well done. Already right, here's coming a good window for Zumi. With a window. Mortality out for Zumi. Still a winnable fight for either side, really. But a pick on a magic turtle is going to make it that much harder for Phoenix Claw to claw this back. Someone's going to have to follow up on that Ash up top, which Barry can do himself, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> really, really nice pull. The halt, very powerful ability. Even with that old nerf that they put on it through double shield. Oh, there's another Still very cool. useful ability. There's a second one going to get that pick. The rest is still up there. Maybe cleanable. Hanzo opting to take a few shots here. Maybe he gets a pick. Maybe he doesn't. He goes. We've got a few ultimates online here for uh, both ends. Just gonna have to see who uses them first, to be honest. A nice shot from Hanzo. A flux coming out of physics. A dragon coming out of Phoenix Claw. A dragon coming out. Another flux. Look at this. Sloppy spite I've ever seen. And a huge rock from Rackon canceling that Nano Sigma's flux. But doesn't look like it's going to lead to much as Phoenix Claw is wrapping this up. Well done to Phoenix Call, managing to win that sloppy fight. Three ultimates still on for Drexel, but uh, we've still got some staggers coming in. They're going to need to back up here and not get picked off. Yeah, we have some guys getting the uh, the new spawn here. <laughs> Kenyon maybe getting pulled a little bit out of position there from Perry, going to get picked off. Make this a quick lead. Wow, with it's Perry, Perry going down. Exploded. Getting that res off. They have the advantage here. Drexel might want to press it a little. Yeah, they got a pick early on, and now Barry's going to pop that bongo. Oh, but a Give massive anti to comes everybody. In. That's a huge anti, but nobody's there to follow up on it. So Bob's going to come in. Reaction Bob going to come in. Maybe a little more uh, advantageous positioning, but he's going to get melted immediately. Both Bobs doing their best. Barry unfortunately gets picked off by that dragon. The Immor nowhere in sight for him, for the rest of his team. Window coming out from Zumi, trying to clean things up. We're going to see how that works out. More and more picks coming in on the side of Magic Turtle and his band of misfits. Phoenix Claw looking to make this the last fight for second point. Hello. How y'all doing? That dragon from Aerosmith is very good. It actually uh, cut off Barry from the his whole team and Zumi was able to immort everybody except for Barry had to make a choice there either for or a single person really exactly what you would see out of the dragon to be honest very well done ultimates few of them committed trying touch point but uh, not gonna happen magic turtle managing to stave off any touchers and very quick and easy cleanup for the side of phoenix ball Now we're back onto the more long range point of this map. Hopefully, we don't see as much value coming out of Magic Turtle here on the Roadhog. It gets some more value from Ratgun and Berries. You know, a lot of staggering here from Drexel. They really needed to work on the whole not dying thing. 
as I say that, by uh, physics. I understand that. That's a little bit of Hanzo RNGesus moment. Perfectly fine. Oh, Rock putting Rackgun right back into position. And a lot of free pushing going on here because of the unfortunate staggering picks they have. They can melt that bot relatively easily. Hopefully they uh, opt to do so. Fight going on up front. Not really turning out to be much at the moment. Oh, Nano coming in on Magic Turtle. Might pick off Barry immediately. The Imor coming out from Zumi to try and save him, oh, but wow. free getting picked off in the process. Rackgun with Rackham a lot of value, though. Force, though. This is a very turnable fight with Staggering now. Spawns coming out. They just need a little bit of time. They're getting picked off. Just to swap into that Tracer this. to try and touch. Drexel can't keep this alive. If they swap to Wrecking Ball and some other quick characters here, they might be able to touch and... <laughs> oh. The Magic Turtle power. Just too strong. Very well done. Magic Turtle whole hogging the rest of the team off of the point. Not even going to let that turn into a possibility. Ready for battle. And I thought the Roadhog wouldn't get as much value on the more long-range part yeah, of the map. Think. But uh, really well played by Magic Turtle, catching those people out. It's exactly what you want to do on the character. It happens. People get out of position. Nice little Hansa Dragon that we're going to see from Aerosmith here. Right on that high ground. Cutting Barry off. Forcing Zumi to make that decision to import the rest of her team. We'll just continue to rain terror on Drexel's team too from here. Well done. Well done, Aerosmith. Looking, really looking like a star DPS player from my uh, perspective here. I'm going to have to agree. All of Aerosmith's dragons on this uh, map so far have been very good zoning tools, or they have followed up on kills. I mean, his dragon before followed up on the Sigma Flux kills, and then earlier, as we saw in that replay, they did cut Barry off from the team and made a very hard choice for Drexel supports. Are we going to see a question on the side of Drexel? <laughs> Man, it seems that way. <laughs> We're going to see it coming out. I don't know how much I like it because of the presence of these long sight lines, the Hanzo Ash, very strong contenders for that Bastion, but we'll see how it works out. See, a lot of teams would opt to just sort of set their Bastion up on the payload. Uh, not not a huge fan of that sort of traditional play style of Bastion. I really like him playing around his sort of angles and not putting himself out and relying on that team too much. Oof, almost getting kicked out there. That was a very nice pull from Prime Salt. Not going to manage to get anybody though. This is getting Ash pulled out again. Getting Ash melted immediately. The ground. Wow, it's a... They do catch out their Sigma though. This could be. They have respawn advantage. It could be. Could be a winning fight here, and Zoe so pops the window and it gets value and helps kill Arissa, which who dropped down. Well, well done. That Bastion was enough of a distraction to uh, manage to seal the deal and hopefully cap the point here for Drexel too. Well, almost coming in on that Mercy's Ash still around. They're gonna have to deal with that. The Bob coming out onto cart, trying to stall it, giving her team a little bit more time to get set up and stifle this uh, recon test. Well, the Bastion's getting too much value here. Yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, value the Bastion's going to get with these long sight lines, these double snipers, two shields. It's a lot of uh, a lot of things to have to deal yeah. with as and a character. Normally, that after you have lose your uh, normally after you lose your pirate ship, you probably should swap off because it, now it's going to be ten times as hard to get Bastion back onto the cart. they play their cards right here, uh, they could manage to sweep through that high ground and get their Bastion set up in an advantageous spot so that the rest of their team can sort of do work, but uh, I'll an interesting see if that ends spot up coming for, out. Uh, Phoenix Claw to be holding their tanks here. You see them on top of the, uh, the little stand yeah, right that there? little ticket booth, yeah. I like it. Ash getting picked off pretty quick, but Rackon managing to flux a large amount of the team here. I get a whole lot of value, but managing to force resources. Barry gonna get picked off immediately after Bongoing. The Immort coming in, the Bob coming out. It's looking like an unfortunate lost fight for Drexel too, but a really well done job. 
inside of Phoenix Claw, and that Kenyat really putting in work right now on the Ash. I would really recommend getting off that Bastion, going something a little better, and rotating around to try and get that off angle on the high ground so that the rest of the team can put some work in. Yeah, the damage on the side of Phoenix Claw is looking a bit uncontested. They're just piling and piling damage on top of these tanks on the side of Drexel. Getting kind of hard to get in through the choke here. Well, you know, it's dark when the Sigma on the op opposing side has more damage than anyone on the side of Drexel's team, too. Again, they really need to be wrapping high ground here. They need to remove that Ash from that spot, otherwise he's just going to get way too much value. Mercy Pocket, the Orisa I think that's what Barry's doing. Barry's <laughs> Barry. flanking the Ash right now. <laughs> Flank Orisa gets the kill, and I would hope that it does not get res. He did drop off, though, so she Orisa could get up there. She can res that Ash. Bongo coming in on the side of Drexel Team 2 to try and wrap this up. Hans are going to be putting some arrows, making Beninator's at or Bob look a little bit like a porcupine. Down he goes. This is certainly a winnable fight for either side. The Rika test is going to need to be very strong on the side of Phoenix Ball. Try and wrap this one up. Both supporters on the side of Drexel we might want to be popped here with only five seconds left before this point to be capped. Here's the window. It's a Both great window. The Phoenix Ball is super low. Very going to get picked off here. The immortality already out. Huge slam on the side of Magic Turtle, locking this point down. They're making Havana a difficult thing to do for the side of Drexel Team 2. The res is going to come in on Rat Gun, so maybe something can be done. Oh, but a Bob from there, opposing Ash, going Another to get Bob. some value. Oh, and the huge boot puts him right on top of the payload. Gonna make it impossible to recontest. Phoenix Claw decisively taking Havana. Really well done on the side of Phoenix Claw. Uh, the composition was uh, really well built around sort of catching people out of position. Uh, and at, around this level, you see that a lot. You see a lot of little minute positioning errors. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Roadhog just kills it. A little Sigma play, I believe, on the side of Magic Turtle. We're going to see... Uh, I see Rat Gun starting it out here. Not going to get a whole lot of value there. But the Sigma lift coming in from Magic Turtle going to get a lot of value here. Very powerful. Ash coming in, cleaning up those Sigma lifted half HP targets. Well done. Yeah, in combination with the uh, the robber on the field, there's no way you're gonna live a flux and a bob with uh, with even with an immortality field or something like that. You're probably gonna need a transcendence. So much damage coming in. Very powerful. But we've got Eichenwald here. Might see a little bit of the brawl. On the side of Phoenix Claw, that would be exciting, but we are apparently going to be seeing a little bit more of that double shield on the side of Drexel, too. Alrighty. Double shield on Eichenwald. We get to see a little like bit more it. of that Kenyat Doomfist. I'm excited because I'm, uh, despite what others think, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Doomfist. Uh, supports hate me for it, uh, <laughs> but I think Doofus is a pretty fun hero, and I hope to see some gameplay out of it. Yeah, Doomfist has a lot, an incredible amount of carry potential, actually. Uh, if he is not dealt with, he will absolutely wipe your team from the face of the planet. Back during the uh, OG Double Shield era, right after Goats, Doomfist was played a lot. And that was mainly because, simply, he could deal damage without having to shoot shields first. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's what sort of made it powerful here, and I'm thinking maybe that could be a pretty similar tale here. Maybe they're sort of predicting the double shield coming out from Drexel 2, and just want to get value without having to deal with shooting shields first, opting for the traditional Hanzo or the Ash. I'm going to look at another Sigma ult here from inside of the Magic Turtle. Lifting this point up with a Rika test, going to put in a ton of damage. Not going to get the rock on the side of Rackon. Really helping to clean up that fight in addition to the Ash Bob. Really huge. Rush versus the... double shield, and that was an amazing, amazing pull. Instantly catches out Lucio. Really nice pull. That's what makes that ability so powerful. Really well done. Farah here that they don't have an answer for. Also going to getting a lot of cleanup carry here. Barry trying to get the Ana, struggling a little bit, but that's okay. Got her in the end. 
Venonator, unfortunately, getting picked there, but the res coming in. Gotta make that pretty much a non issue here. I was gonna say before I looked at a, uh, a clip here, this is a double shield comp with a Phara against Rush with Doomfist. I, it, every day, seven days of the week, this double shield team would beat this Rush team if they had kept their Doomfist. But now they've swapped onto double hit scan to get to take care of physics. I will say this is a pretty powerful point here for Farah. Even with double shield, it's gonna be difficult. The Diva has to step up and sort of get value. Trying to cut off the Farah, but it's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna have to look for a quick uh, escape here and hopefully get a faster recontest. Yeah, they're, they're Cassidy and Diva are in the back here, and you can see this Cassidy's still alive. Okay, now he's resetting. I'm surprised I s we saw Phoenix call Amp Rush on the point instead of picking out a, a vulnerable target like Torbjorn or Sigma. Uh, right, that's traditionally what you'd like to see out of this uh, Brawl stack here. Window coming out from Zumi, gonna stifle the push for a little bit, just gonna yeah, there is add no 10 way seconds to the timer. Far really putting a lot of effort. The Doomfist is going to make sure that Doomfist does not get to play the game. Swap that still immediately. Have five volts, though. See how they pop these here. Some more damage coming out with the Bongo. He's Bongo coming in. Going to get picked off by Chris immediately with a Nano coming in onto the Diva. Don't know how much I agree with that one. Uh, and the uh, Molten Core from Torbjorn going to be putting in wonders oh, wow. to eliminate people, but. A lot of trading here. A little quick reset sure from the I... side of Ana. This might be a fast recontest yeah. for the side of Phoenix Claw. I mean, their Drexel's only four up at the moment. And there's a Lurker in their back line about to try to kill their support. Cassidy attempting that classic flashbang right click. Not gonna work out. Uh, he's not gonna get punished for it. Apparently. Uh, yeah, he's he sitting is... in the back line, just poking at the pharmacy from the second point here. He is still behind, yeah. Ah, uh, huge shatter coming in, eliminating very immediately. The hiding from behind, getting value. The visor coming in. Pharmacy nowhere in sight. Torbjorn getting picked off immediately, and it's just gonna be looking like a second point uh, attempt here from Drexel's team too. Lurking Cassidy will get value. I mean, while they're focusing down on what's happening in the front, he just went around and popped his Q and got immediate value out of that. It, it happens. You gotta make sure those stragglers are at least in the back of your head. Otherwise, stuff like that'll happen. Cassidy's still managing to be behind. Not gonna get picked off for his <laughs> extravagant positioning, let's call it. Aerosmith getting a quick pick on physics. Wow. Fire Strike, making sure that Whoa. res doesn't come through. Drexel 2 needs to reset here. I need to get out immediately. Venonator wasting a little bit of time trying to duel this soldier. Gonna get picked off for it. The tanks do manage to get out, though. I don't know what happened there. I mean, where where is this soldier? The soldier helix rocket, uh, physics, and then Lunar went in for the res, got killed by a fire strike, and then Zumi actually got booped off the map by Diva thrusters. Yeah, pretty unfortunate, but uh, at least they happened quick. Diva bomb coming in, going to get Ben and his turret. Very unlucky, but this is still a winnable fight for Drexel 2. No immortality coming out. The tank's just gonna push right past that window, and a Nano Diva yeah. probably gonna wrap this thing up to the side of Phoenix Ball very quickly. Yeah, the window, if it had placed, if it placed back backwards a little bit more, it probably would have kept them from pushing, but the power of Lucio Amp Speed is uh, to get the, his team through that situation there, which is exactly what happened. Absolutely, it was very well done on the side of Phoenix Claw. Blanking Cassidy gets Zumi and now he's high nooning, but he gets headshot by physics, which is a great stop to that flank. Be and gonna then the come out for the side shatter. of Phoenix Claw. In addition to a shatter, going to help clean this fight up. Fittis needs us all here. Die on card at least. Immortality coming out from the side of Zoom. Trying to stall the point as long as possible, but it doesn't look like we're going to have a fast swap from Sigma. Keeping that flux for Overwatch 2. Never mind, he's going to use it in the loading screen. 
unfortunate, but a really well uh, executed brawl against that double shield on the side of uh, Phoenix Claw. It's difficult. Very difficult to pull off, but they managed it. A lot of out of position uh, players getting picked off, still maintaining that pharmacy even in the presence of double hit scan. Uh, a lot of little mistakes here that I'm seeing that could easily be rectified. Uh, sort of in the spawn room. Uh, as well as some key positional errors and some staggering mm -hmm. that took place that really helped Phoenix Call execute. Yeah, Drexel did not get to fight for very long on second point here, which is usually where the majority of the fighting happens. Uh, it's kind of a rather hard point to take, similar to Gibraltar, with all this high ground. And the, they managed to do it with a rush composition. Oh, due that to, the, uh, to me is the most. Yeah, that to me is the most impressive uh, part. In the rock paper scissors sort of ideology that uh, Overwatch sort of has with compositions. You'd like to, on paper, think that double shield absolutely demolishes uh, brawl, sort of in the rock versus scissors matchup. But uh, you didn't really see that. Really well executed, in addition to a few key mistakes from Drexel, led to a dominant performance from Phoenix Claws for all. Now it is Drexel's turn to show us their rush, and Phoenix Claws turn to show us their double shield with Doomfist. I guess we get Look to see how powerful Barry's Reinhardt is now. Look Doomfist where this in a very Doomfist is nerd spot. <laughs> in a not traditional spot for Doomfist, so probably not looking out for the sim TP gonna happen. The classic char TP, as we call it. That's Symmetra probably going to put in a lot of work against uh, this double shield composition here. I'm excited to see what happens. Very unfortunately getting picked off immediately, but sim, wow. sim managed to get those two picks. I guess there was no call made, but M16 Bloodbath actually hit a, believe a four man purple onto those people coming out of the TP. And there's no follow-up onto it. Could have been an easy yeah. wipe. Phoenix Claw's Ana hitting on a lot of those purples. Those antis are very powerful. Barry coming back. Soldier ult coming in from the side of Aerosmith already. This is a turnable fight now. This, yeah, this fight's even, but now it's just Kenya alive for the Doomfist, and he is now been taken out. Uh, Doomfist moment. Let's see if the Drexel can clean up these staggers here. Marissa Baptista running for their life from Rat Gun, but it doesn't look like they're going to get greedy and go to get some free picks. Yeah, you'd like to see... Uh, I wouldn't even call it greed, I'd just call it smart. You'd like to see them moving in to try and get those picks, try to clear that high ground before they even get set up, but Phoenix Claw already at that point now, so they're going to have to arduously push through that top staircase if they want to manage to get anything done here. Up to Lucio up forward. Doomfist going to try and clear cart. Zuby jumping away from that Doomfist. Not going to let it happen, but the fight is slowly ending on the side of Drexel, too. There goes Zumi, and not a whole lot to be done there. You really got to win the fight before you uh, keep pushing that objective there. Uh, you can't, can't leave any stragglers behind, especially when you don't have any staggers. Walking up that staircase, arguably one of the hardest chokes to get through in the game on a list that includes... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Phoenix Claw Sigma is in their spawn, and... Drexel just got a free pick to hopefully push this cart at least past the bridge here. A little bit awkward for the side of Phoenix Call. This is now a relatively easy stroll through the park if they manage to get there. They do have a bongo to help stave off the push, but a lot of out of position players going to get picked off and very just popping off right now. Duke Assault managed to catch one. Physics does. Uh, off the map, maybe? I don't jumping off the map. <laughs> Unfortunate, but uh, still a winnable fight here for Drexel. Sigma a little bit out of position here. They're going to try and capitalize on that. Doesn't look like they're going to make it happen. Now, very shattering. Oh, nice shatter. Missing the pin oh. and dying alone. Not what you like to see from a Brock Goblin. Oh my Huge blossom goodness. from Venator. With an assist through the window, would he get the 6k? And he gets a 6k, a 6k from the Reaper on the side of Drexel, oh my lord. The has the what a fight turner there.
Barry wow. whipping the pin onto a a support there and got and got some backup from Ben. I get a little bit of a pause in here requested on the side of Drexel 2. Not sure what happened. Maybe uh, Barry feigning a bit of ping excuse for that uh, awkward <laughs> shatter charge combo. Who knows? I'd really like to see that blossom again if we could get it. That was, that was beautiful. Oh, yeah. That was an um, unexpected. Here we go with the replay of that blossom. That backline. This is looking like a lost fight for Drexel 2, but Beninator says no. We win this fight. TP'd into the backline from inside the castle, I believe, and just pressing Q and wreaking havoc on the entire backline inside of Phoenix Claw. If you're gonna try and 1v6 with your Reaper ult, that really <laughs> is the best way to do it. Uh, mid fight, all out of uh, options for the other team, and hopefully they uh, don't respond, respond in time. <laughs> That's ideal scenario for Beninator, and he made it happen. Got a lot of ultimates online here for both sides. Three on the side of Drexel to Phoenix Claws four. Probably going to see a bongo or a window to try and stave off the push. There you go, there's the window. There's a bongo as well. Unfortunate timing because I think uh, Drexel two could yeah. just sort of wait this one out. Yep, they are gonna peel. They Maybe Phoenix Claws should have let the cart get around the corner a little more before popping the ults. Gonna they have to wait a couple more away. seconds here. Barry shield looking a little low. Gonna save the time here. Two ultimates gone. Gonna need some fast ultimates here, and there we see it. Oh, here comes a There's good a few bomb. On both ends. Huge beat, huge bomb, no immortality, but Lucio managed to get picked off. No more for the side, but physics getting crits. Oh, Rat gun picking off. Wow. Sorry it's going down. This is a super a winnable fight. Venus call wanting to die on card as fast as possible here, but. Kenya trying to make it look as winnable as possible, and he will manage to get two and make this a winnable fight. And I think they're going to confirm it here with this nano visor. Phoenix Claw wrapping this one up. Wow. Physics holding on to his uh, photon barrier for quite a long time here. I want to see him place it down to get them some uh, cart coverage here. Hopefully, Drexel 2 has the foresight to see that. Uh... They just used every single ultimate Phoenix Claw, so hopefully they can walk in with that barrier, get a window in, gen that shatter, gen that death blossom, and wrap things up because the ultimate economy is looking very down for the side of Phoenix Claw. Wick barrier going in. Not my favorite wall in the world, but it'll get the job done as they manage to pick off Prime Salt. Both tanks down. Kenyat trying to get as much value as he can, dying on cart before he goes. There he is. The window came out. Now we have to see that shatter come in early. We need to see a death blossom, but unfortunately, Venonator's in the spawn room. Drexel is down a mech and a Reaper, but Barry's in the back line fighting the supports and he dies. Okay. Not what you'd like to see from your brawl. Again, you really need to be playing as one and. Drexel 2 seem to be struggling with that concept a little bit right now. Phoenix Claw managing to wrap this one up with a little bit of stall and as well as a few staggers coming in from Drexel. Making this a very winnable game for Phoenix here. That point was looking capturable, but now they gave Phoenix Claw the chance to get some ultimates online to uh, give themselves a fighting chance to hold this uh, cart from Drexel. If I were Drexel, I'd be looking for a little bit of a drive fight here, but as I say that, Yellow managing wow. to throw it out. Barry getting a huge slam, the Beninator shattered, <laughs> the Beninator Blossom getting value. Kenny not going to be leaving, not going to try and contest point. Baptiste, the only one left to even try it. But it's not going to come out. Kenya getting real greedy on a kill in the back line instead of turning around to go possibly contest the point for his team. That that was a very good map there, I do have to say. Yeah, a lot of uh a lot of back and forth there from both teams. It was really uh impressive to be honest to see the quick thinking on both sides. We're going to see a huge shatter blossom combo coming in from the side of Drexel to wrap that game up. There it is. Really well done on the side of Barry to see that. 
Uh, to be honest, I probably would have called for a drive fight and just uh, sort of fed, but really well done on the side of Drexel here to get that huge shatter versus the double shield. Very, very difficult. Very difficult thing to do, but he manages to pull it through. While they didn't win in the time bank category, they still were able to capture the point all the way, which is always something positive to see. Absolutely. Game, if it uh, continued for another few rounds, definitely could have gone either way. Looks like we might be getting some uh, good old wonderful Temple of Anubis game here. Oh, jeez, I can't wait. Me Nothing too. really rustles my jimmies like Temple of Anubis. Man, I really, really love that map. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta say, still not Volskaya. Speaking of Temple of Anubis and totally and completely unrelated, uh, the <laughs> now loading esports Twitch channel now is affiliated. Well done. You can now subscribe with your lovely Twitch Primes. Every uh, month we get a free a... <laughs> Twitch Prime sub. Get those lovely emotes that I know are currently being made. I know they're pretty spiffy. I've seen a few of them already, at least in concept. Don't know if they're available yet, but they are pretty nice. Uh, the highlights and VODs for all of these games are also available on the Now Loading Esports YouTube channel. I'm sure that's linked somewhere in the panels below. So go check it out if you're looking to uh, get a sort of shortened view of these streams. So you don't have to sit through and listen to me talk uh, about pretty much nothing while we're waiting for these teams to get into the game. Take yep. your bathroom breaks and whatnot. There's two videos uploaded for... Or not two. There's a, a full game posted including casting, uh, unedited, and then there is a video with highlights from your favorite plays during the entire scrim. I know I watch them every single time a scrim goes down. I like to listen to the uh, full VODs whenever I'm going to sleep, just this sort of background noise. I'm, not, I'm that kind of guy. Like listening to your your own soothing voice there, Rick? Oh no, I, I, I can't listen to my own voice. <laughs> So mine, then. That's right. <laughs> uh, might have a swap in from the side of uh, Drexel 2. Uh, not sure if we saw it or not. Uh, doesn't look like it. Oh, no, we did see it. There we go. Uh, opting to throw in Unwritten for what I can only assume is the support role. <laughs> Getting a... <laughs> Getting a whisper from Barry asking me if I appreciated the flanking Reinhardt on second point. <laughs> Gotta say, I thought it was pretty entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so traditionally you like to see a lot of double shield on the defense of this map. It makes it very difficult to attack, especially on that platform. The uh, famous thing people despise about Temple of Anubis. Also traditionally, at least in lower elos, you'd really love to see Junkrat on Temple of Anubis. Definitely a popular one, and looks like we're going to see it on the side of Beninator. Seems to be a bit of a, an expert on the Junkrat tech. Junkrat is a master of controlling this right side, so it looks like uh, Phoenix Claw is going to be running Rush, so they're going to have a hard time breaching in through this right side if that is where they opt to uh, push. If I were them, I would speed straight to point or speed straight through this right side to get up to the high ground of challenge Drexel at the bridge here. Well, it's tough call going brawl here. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know if they're running double shield, even without the Junkrat, it's going to be a pain. Uh. A little bit of tomfoolery going down in the chat that you guys aren't allowed to see, but uh, trust me, it's very entertaining. <laughs> I'm wondering if Magic Turtle really is going to stick with the hog here. That could make things a little bit easier, actually, on their side, because uh, punishing out-of-position players is something that happens quite a bit uh, in this area of... Uh, or rather, in this rank 
of scrim that we see. Uh, the hog, pretty common nowadays and ranked, at least on the uh, NA ladder, mm -hmm. for the same exact reason. Is that it just catches people out of position and without team oriented play to a heavy caliber, it can get value. So people opt for it. Yep, Roadhog is that character for catching those teams uh, out of position. You've got to play elbow to elbow on rush. And if there's a Roadhog against your rush and you're not playing with your Ryan, you're going to get hooked and killed. So I hope, in the case of double shield here, that. Uh, Magic Turtle doesn't get any value against uh, this double shield playing behind two barriers. Yeah, very possible that it will, however. Uh, that Reinhardt really does wonder is shredding shields. We've got a Sim. Maybe we're going to see a TP up onto the plat. Who knows? Kenyat opting for that Symmetra we've seen with Brawl. Actually, last scrim for Dressel's team, too. So we'll see mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah, no, and they do choose to not go with the right one, which is a very great choice. And they are going to TP straight to the point. Just start immediately capturing. Not something I entirely agree with, though. Then again, I don't entirely agree with Brawl's concept anyway. Uh, so we're going to see what happens here. Kenyat getting immediately picked off by Physics. That pocketed Echo, too strong to deal with. Magic Turtle managed to get the trade on to Beninator, but done not die for it. Rest coming in on the side of Drexel's Team 2, and this is just going to be a cleanup. They need to die as fast as possible. And there they go. Run, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Sorry is still alive, chilling on the top of the building over here behind Drexel. Maybe you get a... Oh, he's going to leave. I was gonna say, maybe if he wasn't caught out, he could have booped down the tanks right into the jaws of the rush on the side of Phoenix Claws, but... That would have been entertaining, unfortunately, it didn't really come out. Uh, probably just focusing on not dying there. You're gonna see the rush, still gonna see it. Ryan holding his shield, there it goes. They're gonna have to sit in this room for a long time now with no Ryan shield. Just getting absolutely demolished by this DPS and the double shield. The Junkrat, the Echo, just way too much damage to try and sit in that room for extended periods of time. Physics and catches out the support and Ben gets the uh, Ana. And now uh, Phoenix Claw is kind of stuck up in this mega room. I wonder if they're going to wait for commit or if Drexel's going to push in on them. And wow. I, I just called the die now. Barry unfortunately getting picked off as well as Lunar. The res going to come out, and so they're only going to be down one, but... An unfortunate series of events for Drexel is going to lead them to be a man down in this fight. I believe, uh... Oh no, he did. Barry did get res, so they... Oh no, he didn't. It was someone else who died. Okay. Never mind. And then they do teleport back onto the point this time. A lot of ultimates coming out all at once, oh but a my. huge tire from Beninator just gets four. Oh man, what a fifth, play! Like almost his second six K oh. of the of the scrim sesh here. God, I love Junkrat. Ah, <laughs> oh, my favorite character of all of Overwatch. Might be my favorite. We're gonna have to look at that one back after the uh, map is over. That was incredible. Complete fight turner ultimate right there. Huge pull on the hog, might get a pick. Does it quite quarter HP on that hog? They're trying to cross over to the left. Hopefully they realize that that hog is still over there. He's gonna be looking for some uh, out of position targets here, get a hook down. But now they know of his presence because he's trapped. <laughs> Not gonna go a whole lot of value here. Echo just beaming people down. That character uh, put in the game on purpose, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, physics by the Blizzard developers. Free on Phoenix Claw's rush team here. Oh, an unfortunate Miss Shatter coming out on the side of crits. I really can't recommend enough that they swap off of this rush. Reinhardt is not going to get any value. Three and a half minutes to build that Shatter just to catch nobody because they're running double shield with a bird. Opting for the far now to try to get the value. Magic Turtle throwing it out. Unwritten, unfortunately, going down to crits, but a huge res coming in on the side. Lunar gonna get picked off for it. A huge beat coming out. Magic Turtle getting that pick. This is a winnable fight for either side. It looks like Phoenix is just going to turn this fight. Phoenix will manage to lock it down. Oh, as I say that, Yellow managed to get a pick. The Physics also Very getting one before it goes down. And Rack Rack is going to go for the point. ultimate. But he a didn't missed. shoot the Lucio in the air. He could have killed the Lucio. Barry kills Farah. This, if, they, if Drexel comes back quick, they can win this point. And the tanks are absolutely carrying them. Barry gets another kill, but now... 
Rackon falls. <laughs> Lunar gets a res on the berry, and now Physic and Ben in back are back. This is possible with the win. He pops a Banco and gets some kills with it. Still an entirely winnable fight from ben. either side. Really Another huge tire from Ben. Two. And oh my goodness. The tanks on the side of Drexel just absolutely held that map on this, like, the, the thinnest string I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Prime Salt hitting us with a 2CP moment in the chat. Gotta say, can't agree more. 2CP <laughs> moment on the first point. I think well, that no, just that came was... down to Phoenix Claw not finishing up the kills that they really, really, really needed to finish. Maybe a yeah. shot calling mistake? Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a... A little bit too much uh, exploration. I'm gonna look at that Junkrat tire that we just saw from Brexel a few minutes ago. It's a uh, lovely four man, I believe, that came in. Bam! Fight Turner with the press of a button. Well done, Junkrat. Yet another character that uh, manages to turn fights with just a few button presses, something that you don't see a whole lot of out here in uh, Overwatch land. And being the uh, the huge fight turner of this scrim sash here. <laughs> yeah, 6k better. on Eichenwald and then he gets a 5k with his uh, with his tire and mines right here on Anubis. Both DPS uh, on either side really putting mm -hmm. a lot of work to be honest. I think uh, Aerosmith may be struggling a little bit may chiefly due to that Reinhardt. I mean it's hard to get things done. When you when you can't really take space, I mean, just walking into the left room to the side of that choke, you see, it's just you lose sixteen hundred HP worth of Reinhardt shield just walking into that room that's three feet away from the choke. Yeah, and it's, I said before, it, uh, not possible. Junkrat is really amazing at controlling this right room, but even I didn't think of this, but he's really good at controlling this uh, the Symmetra strategy as well. Right, we got the second Junkrat Tire coming online here in a moment. Uh, the one that helped uh, finish up this cleanup for Drexel on the uh, overtime. Bam! Again, well done. Detonator holding it down for his team while the tanks uh, managed to put in that God's Honest Farmer work. He's called readying up, looking like they're going to be playing a Orissa Hawk comp, uh, along with that Cassidy and Junkrat. Again, Hog not super traditional, uh, but something that Magic Turtle has shown that he's able to do and get value out of. So we're going to see how uh, Drexel responds with what I can only guess will be a double bubble strategy. So you get ready up to go here. We are definitely seeing that double bubble coming out on the side of Drexel 2. Not something you see a whole lot on the North American ladder, but something that actually the East, the uh, Korean uh, lobbies, tend to do a lot. <laughs> Kenya getting a very early pick on the Sombra, just going to have to force a little bit of a uh, a sit from uh, Drexel 2 here. Going to have to wait for the Sombra to get back in position. Maybe farm a little bit of that Nano here. Definitely part of the win condition for this composition, so... It's very good that they're managing to do that. Hopefully Nano almost right online from Unwritten. Oh yeah. Uh, I have to assume that after that immortality ends, they're going to have a huge push. Bubble coming in onto that monkey, the Nano yeah. coming out. Cassidy 1 HP and gets picked immediately. Yeah, that no is... immortality there. Wow. I mean, kind of threw the immortality on his uh, Phoenix Cause team for... Uh, for wow! Reasons. Kenya responding with a huge tire of his own to try and save the day here. This is a very winnable fight for either side, but it looks like Kenya just gonna clutch up. Not gonna allow uh, another one of those scenarios to happen. Kenya provided Drexel with the nano boost, but in return, it provided him with his tire. Just showing really well that, executed uh, yeah. to start, though, on the, on the side of Drexel, but uh, just in the mid-fight, they managed to get a little too separated, and Junkrat loves to take advantage of that, just like his counterpart, Roadhog. I 
for the little uh, jump there from the side of Barry. Really oh, initiating really hard. Pull. And that huge primal is going to be thrown out here, trying to get the pick onto the Baptiste that's playing behind the choke. Doesn't look like it's going to come out. Aerosmith throwing the high noon out. Doesn't look like it's going to get too much value here. Barry trying to jump back to safety. Almost jumping right into the high noon. Oh, <laughs> managed to get picked immediately from that Roadhog catching Barry. Just a little bit out of position. This map is Junkrat heaven on first point. I mean, both Junkrats on the side of both of these teams have been causing issues uh, for either side. Five ults on the side of uh, Phoenix Claw. I think Drexel would do well to sort of go in hard uh, and try to pull as many of those out as they can because this is going to be a very difficult fight otherwise if they choose to dedicate some ultimates. I can see Kenya here kind of setting up for a possible sneaky tire. But it might not Unrank be needed. Gets in before the nano comes out. Hopefully they don't pop oh, any ults here. Oh. And there it is. There's two Instant there's pop drive tire. coming out. Yeah. I'm out of Honestly, in my mind, well done. Inside of Drexel. They only pulled out two. Uh, but sometimes that's all you need. Now they've got a ton of ultimates on their side, and this is a very winnable attack that they can do here. They have a minute to get this EMP sub. An EMP, regardless of how many ultimates Phoenix Claw has, will ab can absolutely just completely flip the table over and change the course of this fight. And there's the huge EMP with the combo of the grab. Hopefully can grab, finish everything off just here. Oh, but it's not gonna matter. There's way too many ultimates to even yeah. consider losing this fight on the side of Drexel. They used all their ultimates here and M16 Bloodbath through the Nana Boost onto a target. I'm not sure which, but it doesn't matter. They just got absolutely demolished. Well done, Drexel 2. Going out for that dry fight and popping the ults they needed. Now we get to see a some uh, second point action here. A little bit harder a point to push, I think. Yeah, second point, uh, pretty complicated, but uh, once you realize the strategies to get through it, uh, just like every GCP map, it gets easier, wow. especially in a team setting. Barry, unfortunately, has a monkey moment there and just gets shredded the second he jumps. Even with the help from the Zari bubble and his own personal bubble, he popped like a balloon. Yeah, not a whole lot you can do there. A few ultimates online for the side of uh, Phoenix Claw here. Uh, probably going to see a few of those pop here if Barry does not manage to get Danny Deletoed again. Uh, Kenya is looking for another rotate. sneaky tire again, I think. Ooh, Fizz is getting hooked, but a wonderful bubble coming on the side of Rackgun to save his team. Barry jumping in immediately onto point. Needs to back up. Oh, pops primal. the primal. Well done. Needs to get out. Oh, but he's oh. going to get picked by the high noon. <laughs> Unlucky for Barry. Looks to me as if Drexel is not going to push. It's only three up. Gotta say, uh, I can't agree with popping that many ultimates when we know the enemy team has a, so many of them online and we only have one. It's not something that I would be doing, uh, but hopefully we can see a little bit of a return to form here on Drexel 2's attack. It worked for them first point. Dry fighting and saving the EMP. I hope they do it second and confirm them this this W. Complete Beninator trying to get gain a little bit of EMP charge here. Getting a hack onto that Roadhog. Probably going to have EMP for this fight if they choose to initiate. Oof. Almost getting picked off by that Cassidy who manages to translocate out fast enough. They're going to get hooked. Bubbled. Now they're going to need to place a little bit more passive while they wait for some cooldowns to come back. Hopefully oh, they nobody slept, gets They slept Kenya in the happens. back trying to get a sneaky flank and now they're up one. Ben is coming up with his hack, his EMPs, oh, but it doesn't matter. He gets flash headshot. So if you're going to be throwing that nano on Barry, a grab coming out, they're trying to wrap this one up now. Barry unfortunately getting picked off. Physics trying to wrap this up on that Cassidy, no but too strong. That Arisa Bongo, very powerful, but Physics, flashbang, right click power. Immortality coming out, he's purple, going to die immediately, Doomfist on Sophie. The nano coming out onto the Doomfist, but and the EMP he, coming out to try and stifle that. List. Looter popping the rally. This should hopefully confirm them the win here and getting so much armor. Rally really does uh, help you turn fights like that. Oh. I'm not going to catch anything. Then the immortality not going to matter because Sari is not on the point. 
a lot of two CP moments. Wow. <laughs> a lot of two CP moments in the chat that we're seeing there. We're going to see the EMP uh, grab combo on the first point that we saw. Very nice. Yeah, a lot of ultimates popped here and totally worth it to cap this first point. In a match setting, this would have been a victory immediately for the side of Drexel, but we got to see mm -hmm. them do pretty much the same exact thing uh, on the second point. Yeah, the DPS are really showing their their skills here with their ultimate use that entire map. I mean, Kenya with the with the tires, Ben with the tires, and the EMP physics was absolutely melting with Echo the entire game. It was a great game. That was a great match. Yeah, voices in my head. Am I allowed to take a short bathroom break? Voice is just a little too quiet right now. I guess I'm gonna have to hold it. Helios, the funny map. It's yeah, probably going like to be coming Helios. up here. Getting a few questions here from uh, the team. I'm going to have to respond to those. Give me one moment. Now arriving there we are. Ready for battle. Got ruins here. Definitely not the funniest of the funny maps, but we uh, we're gonna see it. Thankfully, this is the old scrim. Maybe a little bit of uh, Reinhardt action. Oh, we see Sea Dog now instead of Barry here, uh, opting for that main tank position. Oh, Sponty in the game now, going to be playing and casting at the same time. That's an impressive feat that we're gonna see here. Can't wait to see. I've never seen a caster also be playing in the game that they're casting, so uh, it's going to be an interesting combo. We'll see. <laughs> I'm like Aerosmith might be opting for that Doomfist again. I'm really excited to see that. I really enjoy watching... Uh, I really enjoy watching Aerosmith play Doomfist, to be honest. He's pretty entertaining on the roll, and I think Doomfist is an entertaining character to watch, so... I guess we will see. Uh, both teams look like they very well maybe running Brawl, something you don't see a whole lot. You traditionally will see a Ball Comp or Zombie. Uh, that six-man... Uh, that six-man dive you really see coming in. More questions that I'm getting asked in my uh, Whisper feed here. I am being trolled here by the <laughs> captain of uh, Drexel. As much as I want to play the, the kitten character, I cannot. I must do my civil duties as casting these wonderful games. With my uh, co-anchor oh, here, Rick. <laughs> Definitely going to see that brawl coming out from both sides. Again, not something you traditionally see here on Ruins, but I'm excited to see how they, uh, how they run it. The Reaper and the Cassidy coming in on the side of uh, Drexel 2 while they Junkrat and a Doomfist. Not a whole lot of kill confirmed. Hopefully the Doomfist ends up getting a little bit of value because otherwise it's going to look like a hard one. For Phoenix Junk, well, lots of high burst potential, but it's not going to matter with the, uh, with the Cassidy who can completely negate Doomfist from a range. Absolutely. Same can be true for Junkrat as well. It's just not a whole lot that uh, he can do when the Cassidy is marking him. That's exactly what happens. And not a whole lot of value gained from either of those characters. The ultimates are coming up pretty quickly here. Lunar almost has window already and Sea Dogs are halfway to shatter. It's another 10% ahead of uh, Chris. Only a lot of impressive ult charge that can be gained from Baptiste is uh... Mm -hmm. Splash damage really helps him in that regard and unfortunately Chris just going down immediately to that Reaper. Kenya managed to get the trade at least. Physics having a little bit of a duel by himself on that Junkrat. The Junkrat going to need to escape immediately. Uh, maybe a quick recontest could help uh, help alleviate the fact that Drexel does not have their Reaper with them right now. Quick little run and we can make this a 5v6 battle for a short moment. Very good choice to pull back after losing crits. I mean, it's the main tank. 
Can't really engage much on this point without your main tank. Absolutely. We're not gonna come out. Not gonna do a whole lot. The tire coming out. Gonna get picked off by physics. The beat coming down. A lot of ultimates being faded here. A nanoed crits managed to get a huge shatter though, and here we go with the cleanup. Hopefully Zomi and uh, Rackham can contest as long as they can to get some point percentage here. And they will take no it to about uh, nice. 70%. Yes, very nice. A lot of ultimates online for the side of Drexel. Hopefully we don't see uh, too much over ulting here. I know they're sort of prone to that on occasion. Wow! That is a oh. very well placed bomb. Gets killed out of the D mech, but the placement was fantastic. Well done. I love to see that one again because getting murdered essentially instantly after sending that bomb, but still managing to get three and ending that fight. That's better. Not something you see a whole lot up there, to be honest, but great bomb. Got. Four ultimates on the side. We got a diva bomb that we potentially be seeing in the replay here. But another fight, fight is on. breaking Grab out, and Sea Dog gets caught in the grab by himself. Anti but in. lives for the There's time the being. Fine. Getting stunned immediately by physics. Not going to get killed immediately. Oof. Lunar gonna get picked off by that junk rat and crits. Going to make it a day at the hammer range here. Gonna finish this one off. Crits really locking it down the Reinhardt. I like Crits' Ryan a lot. Just gotta know when to. I don't know when to unleash it, and this is a map where it's certainly unleashable. A lot of ultimates uh, used in that scenario, though. Only a tire on the side of Kenya and a window on the side of Lunar for Drexel 2. Uh, Zumi close to a beat at the 70% uh, marker. Uh, we'll see uh, how Drexel decides to play this. Only being only at 50%, Drexel does have two fights, two and a half maybe, in them to get this. Uh, win on this uh, point here, and the Kenya here comes pops that tire Kenya from tire. the high ground. Ooh, nice it does demeg Rackgun, but it and could have just stayed inside the uh, the immortality field there. And now this fight is looking like a loss. Maybe a bit Chris of overall thing on the wow. side of uh, Crit there. Not totally sure if that shadow was necessary, but you know what? On Reinhardt, you got to swag out sometimes, and <laughs> I guess that was one of those times. A lot of ultimates on the side of Drexel 2 here. Very turnable fight. See Only a coming nano. Out his own uh, shatter. Rackin another bomb. Window B. We're gonna have to see a touch here from probably Zumi. Well, not Zumi from gonna Zumi. gonna get picked off immediately. Unfortunately, no beat coming out. Wow, and Lunar got punched off the map. Very uh, unfortunate series of events for the side of Drexel 2, but very well executed. Surrounding that point, uh, surrounding that choke where Drexel 2 wanted to pour out of. It's and that that's high going to be burst a map. potential from uh, Doomfist and Junkrat. They were wanting to conserve their ults a little bit to get some value out of it, but then they ended up holding them, and which caused Junkrat and Doomfist to be able to uh, literally insta kill anyone on their team. Gonna be seeing that uh, lovely Reinhardt play on the side of Crits. Uh, really well done to be coming out there, but just not enough to help deal with that uh, swinging Reinhardt. It's a day at the, uh, day at the range here for German Hammer Man. Little Kovacs if uh, they added hammers to Kovacs. We're taking a look at that Diva Bomb again that I asked to look at earlier. It was really, I mean, look, the pick just came instantly, but the bomb. Perfectly placed to get three picks and just demolish any hopes Phoenix could have had of winning that team fight. Perfectly placed bomb and a perfectly placed tree as well. I couldn't even see the bomb explode in the replay. But that was beautiful. From my perspective, flying in the god cam, it was placed in right in the dorm frame of the inside window in the air above the point. It was it was fantastic. Five, four, three, two. We'll be seeing a far on the side of Aerosmith here for Phoenix Claw. A little bit of that ball comp with a Roadhog and an Ana. Typically, you might be seeing a Zen here, maybe a Tracer on the side of Kenyat. Uh, and again, we're going to see the Orissa Hog on the side of Drexel too. Something I don't think I've seen them whip out lately. 
uh, with the Doomfist and the Echo. We're going to see how this uh, works out running that Bap Lucio. Venator going to get sick off immediately. Fortunately, oh, yeah, swap on that. <laughs> pretty poor map for Doomfist here when you run it against Afara. Uh, but Physics managed to get that Mercy before getting killed by uh, Kenyat there. Uh, hopefully not dying here. Gotta make sure uh, not to feed too hard here. Gotta ensure that the fight takes place again. Lunar in a little bit of trouble with that Farah on point and... Well, there they go. Gonna need a hard to regroup here. A lot of Pokemon on the side of Aerosmith is already 63% of his way to ult. You've got the Ana on the side of Phoenix with 75% of her ult, while uh, most of Dressed 2 is sub 50 wow. on their ult. Sorry, it was caught out by Sea Dog. And now Farah really is left alone without any support, uh, unless Ana can hit her shots. Without, while trying to roll uh, through, never a good alive. idea against Arisa Hog. Gonna get picked off. So a low soak on the side of Rackon, almost managing to get that tank, and Seed Hog, oh. they get pulled off by the Roadhog. Turtle gets yoinked. Very turnable fight here from Phoenix Claw, and as I say that, Aerosmith getting the pick on a Beninator. Lunar might get picked off here. Physics, oh, almost falling down the well. Winnable fight for either side here as the High Noon comes out and manages to catch Physics. A little bit of a sloppy fight on the side of Drexel. I mean, if you know there's a Roadhog presence, you already know he's going to be trying to hook you into the hole. Absolutely, that well is pretty much Hog City. Um, there's a reason 12 Hogs, 1 Hole exists as a lovely uh, custom game mode. One of my favorites to play when queuing up for some long ranked games. Absolutely. <laughs> Drexel opting to rotate on that right side again with the far above them, which oh, does man, have Barrage. Probably going to see here in two seconds. And, oh my there goodness. It is. I saw that coming from a mile away in the goddamn. Yeah. Well called there, uh, Sponty, Mr. Mr. Coon. Very well executed from Aerosmith. And I don't think Drex is going to get any contest here. Might be able to see the Zoomy Lucio get a touch on the point, and he oh, will. She does. Uh, floating around in the hole a little bit, going to get the ball hawked off. The ball, going to need to be the last line of defense here to try and maintain some point presence. Oh, Physics and Ben just getting picked off immediately. That's a skeletal fight. Gonna get made quite skeletal. And then Rackham might have been made up by a rider. Deep dark abyss of the well to close yeah. out that point. Decisive one. We saw a 99 to 99 on the last point. 100 to zero here for the well. So hopefully for the uh, third one we can see a 100 to zero for Drexel. Gotta take a peek at the uh, fire barrage that we saw that Sponty was so uh, lovely and clever at calling out. There you go, that's absolutely massive. It's uh, very well positioned, to be honest, from their far, knowing that uh, they're going to be pouring out of that mm -hmm. choke. It's really where Faras thrive over those sort of choke points there. And just to think the fight right before is what prompted Rackon to switch on to D.Va to be able to help contest the Fara, but getting d -max before the barrage came out. We're be seeing another Rhine mirror here. That could be uh, pretty entertaining. We're seeing a lot of that. This is a lot of uh, classic Overwatch we're seeing here. Fortunately, I, uh, I gotta say I'm a fan of it. Uh, they're actually getting a lot of work, to be honest, on that brawl. Last scrim, they pretty much ran into nothing but that uh, that brawl and the nerdy six-man dive. Mm. And, uh, we're seeming seeming to see that again here. Uh, but Magic Turtle and Crits seem to have swapped positions. Crits on the Diva. Uh, instead, opting to let Magic Turtle take the reins on the German man. Interesting to see both teams in the pre, in the pre-match lobby to uh, opt for a rush on a historically a dive type of point. Yeah, you really see uh, you see a lot of the double bubble style, a lot of the sort of Brig Anna leaving them to sit on top of the high ground with a hit scan of some sort. And sort of letting the tracer or the echo and the monkey or ball, letting them sort of do their thing. Uh, but these teams decide to opt for the brawl. And to be honest, I'm a fan. I like it. It's just, it's very difficult when you have that setup up top on the high grounds of either side uh, for a brawl to deal with that. And they sort of just have to sit on point and get picked mm -hmm. apart in those scenarios. Uh, but in a brawl mirror, who knows? Yeah, and... Uh... 
Drexel and uh, Phoenix Claw opt for different damage styles. Phoenix Claw opting for more of that uh that burst insta kill type damage, and Drexel opting for the uh, poke type damage uh, for this particular composition. Which Echo is going to rain okay. free. Re Echo yeah. is for sure going to, well, maybe not, Five, well, depending on four, if it's just for a TP three, out, but Echo can rain free. The skybox on this map is very, very high. I think this might be the first TP out of spawn. Oh, it's not a TP out of spawn. Okay. What Jarek will do is sticking with the Symmetra on this point. Let's uh, let's see how that works out. This is going to be a, a hold the point type of uh, composition for Drexel. Really, but unfortunately, they get split off a little bit. Chris managing to take advantage of that. And yeah, not a harder fight than it needed to be. To get on the point. Yeah, need a little bit more uh, discipline there if you're gonna try and do the sort of Symmetra Brawl style. And uh, it's just not there yet, but that's why we're here. Ah, uh, Magic Turtle. Uh, and a little fancy. A little, uh. <laughs> <laughs> A little now, too excited I, winning that first point. <laughs> if I were Physics here, Physics is pretty good on the far from my experience in watching him play. I would swap far here against Reaper Doomfist. Absolutely. Yeah, far is, would just absolutely tear this apart. I wouldn't even be on Ryan in the first place. I would be on sort of monkey deal and Lucio would just easily get value uh, swapping to Mercy. Ben's gonna He's make gonna a Doomfist swap here to try to try to ego Kenya, knowing Ben is his favorite DPS Doomfist. And he does get I picked by yeah. Aerosmith. Unironically, a Doomfist counter. Not like when we uh, like to say that he's a mm -hmm. farm counter. Uh, Zumi managing to dip the Lucio, but not a whole <laughs> lot else going on for uh, the side of Drexel here. Just, uh, oh. Alright, uh. Fall off the map number two. Can we see a third? We will see. Uh, Phoenix Claw getting very excited for uh, winning these team fights. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy they're excited. They just got to manage to contain it a little bit because jumping off the map there, not not something you like to see. And yeah, doing a little bit of cool Doomfist rollout, trying to see how much value you can get. Messing oh it up just a little goodness. bit. Oh Doesn't matter. Shatter, Nano. All sorts of ultimate abilities coming out on the side of Phoenix Claw. Making Drexel 2's push almost a non-issue. And as I said, really, not a whole lot of ultimates, to be honest, to be had on the side of Drexel 2. We've got a wall and a and a, uh, a sim wall and a BAP window coming in. But they need to touch, so I'd like to see that wall come out ASAP. Diva Bomb coming out on the side of Pritz. Going to get that immortality, but Rackgun going to manage to get to the baby to pick. 4% left. Oh, they TP on. There's, there's the TP on. There's the sim wall. Not sure how much I agree with the sim wall placement, but it'll do its job. Lunar, unfortunately, getting picked off by the Ana Nade, not playing on the proper side of it. Shatter gets a nice through. shatter. Sea Helped them confirm Very this nice. win, which was looking turnable, but not so much anymore. Oh. Wow. It's going to manage to demech rack gun. That is. Very unfortunate for Beninator, managing to make sure that nothing else is going to happen there. And I really need a uh, strong hold here, Drexel 2, in order to maintain this Phoenix Claw looking very, very powerful with this Ryan composition, so, and that Doomfist particularly, putting in a lot of work, so we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see how well they can do. I say that Kenya staving up top, Reinhardt charging in a little bit, uh, a little bit silly, the sorry beat coming out. Everyone on the team. Sorry. Wow. Nice beat on the side of Sorry. And unfortunately, the ult economy uh, just too strong, and Drexel 2 going to get taken out. Ben does kill his uh, his Doom Mirror, Kenya, and he kills Sorry. And ben Ana. Ben kill three. Wow. If this wow. team can get back quick, this might be turnable, or they could take this fight back. It's, it's only three totally people alive on the Josh side of Phoenix in. Claw. There goes Cedo getting the pin. Going to get shattered for it, but a huge bomb coming out. Only going to be able to shield one person, and that's the Reinhardt. But Kenyat comes back and makes sure that absolutely nothing changes. And unfortunately, Decisive the three victory. people left alive on the side of Phoenix Claw were Ryan, Roadhog, and Reaper. And Roadhog and Reaper are those types of characters that could go off on their own and survive pretty much anything doing their own thing. Going to be looking a little bit at Kenyat's Doomfist that I've been uh, praising. 
here, hopefully boosting his ego just a little bit more. That's what all Doom players need. Nice pick. Here we go. This is exactly what you want to see as a Doomfist, just people to use your abilities on. The HP that you can gain with those shields, I mean. Might have been a little bit of a jump off the map there at the end, but really well done from Kenyat, managing to turn the tides, especially with such a poor DPS. Now we're going to be looking at a little bit of a Reaper play here on the side of uh, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix oh, wow. Phoenix Claw. <laughs> went for the Blossom, but uh, they just went through uh, Physics's TP, and Raka just managed to eat uh, a little bit of that damage coming through so they can all get through safe and sound. Yeah, not a... I don't know how you could do there. Pretty good shutdown on the side of uh, Ratgun there. Uh, voices in my head be damned. I'm going to use the bathroom. I will be back spotty. See, ye old classic Scrims Row. Probably gonna see Rush at least on one of these teams. It looks like a uh, Magic Turtle and uh, Prime Salt are gonna run double shield. I'm seeing a little bit of uh, some cheeky Symmetra and Bastion gameplay probably gonna happen i'm assuming this has happened to me in tournaments believe it or not where they tp on top of the statue to give bastion the high ground advantage and bring down hellfire on the opposition Hopefully Jexel can uh, find a way to deal with this uh, godlike Bastion that's probably going to be in the sky above their heads. Back. Rick is back. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Scrims Row. Would you take a peek at Phoenix Claw's team comp for me? Oh boy. I was, I was telling the stream, uh, I believe they're going to be teleporting on top of the statue head. Yeah, As uh, we've experienced in, in tournaments before. Yeah, you'd see a Sigma usually out of this, but I'm excited to see uh, what comes out of it with this Hog instead. Being on oh, the they, side statue instead. They don't go on top of the statue, they're on the side. Still... I gotta say, without the Sigma, I'm a fan, and that definitely helps uh, put some pressure on the side uh, of Drexel 2 here. Uh, they're gonna have to go on that Bastion quick if they want to get something happening. Where is he set up? He's now set up on the high ground, and there is no contest for him except for Rackham, who is going up for him right now uh, with physics, and they do kill him. The pick, but they, they leave the mercy. the mercy. She's going to get this res. It was going to come out. Physics is going to get picked off, and now there's really no line of defense for that Bastion. Yeah. Now Bastion's just going to be able to rain down hell with uh, no possibility of surviving if you go to touch that point. Very unconventional uh, team composition, but it works out. Yeah, very odd for push. Phoenix Claw. Phoenix Claw, but uh, a very powerful one if you don't uh, have the necessary tools to deal with it. Alright, gonna go into Remek here, and uh, a few ultimates on both sides here. Got a mail coming online, as well as a window on the side of Unwritten, uh, as well as some wall action from the Sim of Phoenix Claw. There's the window coming out, and a huge oh pick on Prime Salt immediately. Sim Walk gonna come out. It just takes choice to do it vertically, considering the window can still shoot through. Oh wow, Magic Turtle flanks and actually got Lunar out. That is the classic flanking Roadhog. That's another attempt there, the May Ice blocking, the Diva DMing it. Not gonna get a whole lot, but Drexel 2 really needing to uh, either die on Carter or get out here. This is just a yeah, very long, really long stagger walk right back. Here. Yeah, they might not even get a second fight here if they manage to keep dying. Yeah, yeah it doesn't dog. look like it. Sea Dog's down and they have no mercy. It's gonna be looking like a third point hold here. I am on fire. Uh, 
Really, uh, really unfortunate positioning. Really, uh, not something you like to see on the side of Drexel. You really need to make those fights count and uh, make sure they're quick, especially on the brawl when you're running that Bat Lucio. Yeah, they need to make a decision to uh, amp speed either onto this bash or onto the carp to kill this Bastion, get the biggest threat out. And here comes a nice freeze from Ben, exactly. freezing the entire team except for Symmetra and Orisa. But they don't have everything, uh, all the utility to fill up on the kills. Bastion is going to be res. They're going to have that for this recontest here from Drexel 2. This is going to be a very difficult fight. Uh, something I actually often doing is swapping to Bastion on King's Row 3rd for mm -hmm. a recontest when my team is attacking. Oh, what a huge Blank shatter, shatter by Sea Dog. Is he going to get any kills from it? He kills Symmetra. A and now Zumi comes back from Lunar. Or from Lunar, sorry. Yeah, back with the beat. Wow, a huge flag shatter from Sea Dog. Finally, a one fight from Drexel. Now they have a chance to. Hold this corner for 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Drexel seems to be opting for their own Bastion. Uh, might have a little harder of a time without the uh, requisite May that you have on the side of... Uh, or rather, going to have an easier time being Drexel 2 with their May rather than the Doomfist that Aerosmith is opting for. And, yeah, it stayed in century, wow. in century uh, mode right in front of that window. Unwritten doing a great job taking down that uh, Bastion quick. And you have a swap. We're going to see some Genji gameplay. Another relatively non traditional option here for King's Row, but I guess we'll see what happens. Oh. Magic Turtle just yoinks Ben right off the map. And Sea Dog gets a nice shatter, but it has much. no follow up. <laughs> Magic Turtle going to Whole Hog Sea Dog before getting taken out by Lunar and Rat Gun. Uh, just uh, they need to like uh, they need a tighter regroup here. They really need to uh, just get that fight going instead of getting these little meme stagger kills because all it's going to do is give Drexel more of an ult economy advantage and uh, positioning advantage because they have the spawns. Not oh, the wow, other that way is around. a great wall to block that window, but it gets broken through instantly. And Aerosmith one-shots Lunar just about with that. Oh, this is going to be a huge bomb. Very nice. nice on the side of Rackon. Rackon's bombs this night have been really on point. Really impressive. That 4 minutes and 40 second hold is looking more and more like it could take place here. They're cycling ults really well. Uh, Unwritten back with another window and Physics has their tank. On the side of Phoenix Claw, we have a couple ultimates about to appear online, but none at the start of this fight. And they're using uh, a nano, or rather having VAP before, means that this is going to be a dry blade coming out from the side. Aerosmith getting a pick, but Physics taking out Kenyatta immediately. That dry blade not powerful enough. A tire coming in on the side of him, but getting bashed. Countering a tile, a tire with a bastion ult. Interesting. Oh, then he gets hooked off the map by Magic Turtle. He didn't have to do that to Physics. Or Physics. Roadhog is fishing on King's Row today. Roadhog is too powerful. Really strong. Uh, hopefully this ball for Drexel 2 can stall a little bit, but Rackon looking like he's going to get taken out immediately. Physics trying to stall on that Tracer with the Immortality Field present. Recall here. Prime Stalk getting pinned and Sea Dog wow, with another massive big shatter. shatter. Sea Dog might be able to turn this fight here if his team could come back and help follow with some kills. Aerosmith trying his hardest to try and win this fight. Gonna have to try and take out <laughs> Ben, but gonna get taken out before that's possible. And looking like a one fight for Drexel. Oh. That was a humongous shatter from Sea Dog. Uh, really able was. to get a couple kills before his team could come back and recontest. Uh, we've got a Shatter on the side of Prime Salt for Phoenix, as well as a Tyre and a Valkyrie. And not a whole lot going for Drexel, maybe a Doom Pistol and a Lucio Beat ready to be used. What started off as well a 4 minute and 40 second hold is now down to 1 minute. In the last 60 seconds here, Tyre gonna come out. See how much value you can get going right down Main Street. I'd be amazed if this managed to get any value, but you never know. 
and he gets none. Oh, and Sido taking this shield down right before the shatter was thrown down. It looks like this is probably going to be the last of Drexel for this defense. A lot of ultimates charged really quickly on the side of uh, Phoenix Claw. Managing to wrap that one up before it uh, got away from them, but actually a really impressive hold from Drexel too. To uh, managing to hold it for four minutes just on third point alone. So, well done for that, and uh, well done to Phoenix Claw for managing to wrap it up and the way that they did. We will have a replay or two. Uh, there were a few playmakers there on the last point. Gonna see the uh, Diva on the side of Ratgun here getting a nice bomb after this May freeze. Well done. Very well executed. Ratgun's Diva bombs have been on point. On another note, it's also a very well placed freeze. It uh, split the opposition uh, two ways. There's people in front of the car and people behind, and it forced uh, a rather risky immortality, which could only save uh, Sorry himself. Good combination. Right, so I'll take a little dance outside the front of the door here, <laughs> trying to. I don't know if this is an intimidation factor or uh, maybe some sort of Reinhardt mating call. Maybe. See if Sea Dog responds with their own dance. <laughs> I don't know if the diva's enthralled, I don't know. Overwatch in its natural habitat. Yeah. <laughs> Magic Turtle going to join in with that. <laughs> Here. Kenyat we see on a position uh, above Hotel. Uh, on uh, on Drexel's side of the chokes, so... Maybe this could... Uh... Yeah, some flank Junkrat uh, one-hit combos. Magic Turtle requesting that Drexel's team come to the door. Not sure what the uh, not sure what the goal is here. Uh, <laughs> guess we'll see. Uh, nice ball Reinhardt comp is kind of awkward yeah, here on ball King's Ball Ryan with the junk. I did see Ben swap to Farah for a second just to get himself up into the high ground, but I actually. I would love to see someone switch to Mercy and then Ben go or Physics go onto the Farah. Farah would be absolutely free against this uh, defense composition. To be honest with you, Farah has been relatively free this entire night if Drexel opted to play it. They've been playing a lot of that burst damage like you've been talking about with that Doomfist, with that Reaper, sometimes with the Stim. I mean, you've seen a lot of it, and none of that really counters Farah. I'd like to see more of that swap from Drexel, too. Yeah, if anybody's remotely comfortable in Farah, you get a, a pocket mercy, and you're going to get your ultimate and five rockets, and you're going to wreak havoc on the team. But we are going to see a more traditional brawl from Drexel. Hopefully get a good amp speed, speed engage or a wall to block off somebody. Here we see a Kenya in the back line, like I said, getting the one-hit combos. And he does get a main support, but Phoenix Claw loses the main tank, but it doesn't matter in the end. A few picks on the side of Drexel could actually spell trouble for Phoenix Claw if the recontest happened fast. As long as Rakan does not feed his mech here, uh, we could absolutely be seeing uh, Phoenix Claw forced to give up a tick or two mm -hmm. in the interest of getting a full fight on the first point here. Sorry, did go back to speed his team, so it looks like Drexel they're kind of dragging their feet here. Text. They really need to be on point now, but a little too slow, and the full fight is going to happen now, rather than a tick or two later. Wall forcing them to rotate through hotel, and yeah, they that made it so strong. Wow, <laughs> unfortunate that he managed to get picked off. You got to stay behind your Reinhardt there, uh, Beninator. Oh, this is looking winnable with huge shatter from Sea Dog. Oh my goodness! Wow, Sea Dog. With a titillating shatter. Incredible. There was a decision that had to be made there. Either back out and wait for my team or press Q and destroy their team, and I'm all for that second decision. That was incredible. 
Oh, a window coming out on the side of uh, Unwritten here. Gonna try and get a little bit of value here. Poking at that Reinhardt, a Reaper TP up to top left. A little bit of a Reaper duel gonna go on with that window up front. Sorry, gonna get picked off. Kenya more is more up here skeletal by the well. moment. With it. Kenya is up top with his tire right now. Oh, maybe wow, yeah. this tire uh, Unwritten will be able to react quick enough, but Rakan decides to check and call him out and get that little sneaky rat out of there. They probably yeah, know he has a, tire a, by now. Yeah. That's, that's a game-winning check. That could have uh, oh. ended very poorly. And Sea Dog managing to pick up their honor early. Uh, a long fight is perfect for Drexel, and that's looking to be exactly what they're going to get here. They might have a little repeat of what happened to them on point two. Maybe not even a second point fight happening here. With yeah, Phoenix Paul is going to have to fall back and wait for the team to come back to uh, recontest, but it doesn't look like oh. it. That was a very well-placed popsicle. Right into the forehead of Junkrat. Yeah, Kenya gonna get picked off, and it looks like they're not even gonna get a contest here. They really need to uh, back off here. Their hog is trying his best, but just gonna get evaporated immediately. The Reinhardt pushing with 0.13 meters to go. Oh, here Nano we go. coming through, and a huge wow, shatter. That is a massive huge shatter. Spin. Wow. If there were any hope for Phoenix Claw to pull that back, Physics it trying was to win this here. Happened. But Physics, Physics captures it. Oh my goodness. Wow. Phoenix if Physics tried to win the 1v4 in the in the back line and ended up back capping Phoenix Claw on, uh, because no one was on the point. Rather unfortunate there. For the True side of Phoenix Claw. Charlie Niner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Magic Turtle gonna get a pick here, gonna get a huge hook onto the Reinhardt there. He goes. Right, gone fishing again. <laughs> that is classic. When you have a Roadhog on King's Row, you just wait till third point. That fishing is exactly what happens. Oh man. Yeah, we've got a few ultimates online. We still got Kenyat's tire to come in. We got Magic Turtle on the uh, Roadhog ultimate. And we've got a beat uh, on both sides. We've got a window for Drexel 2 as well as a shatter and a bomb. Hopefully we're gonna see a little bit of a shatter bomb combo. I wanna see them clear that right side first. I need to see them get rid of that hog. He cannot sit there and go fishing. Almost get the hook, but a huge boop coming out from Lunar. Well done. Yep. Reaper in the back line. Hopefully not going to get too much value, but Unwritten does get picked off. Aerosmith, wonderful job. No main tank on the side of Phoenix Claw. Maybe a, a shatter for Seedal to kill these stragglers, or they're going to hold it for these uh, this last fight. Looks like it's what he's probably going to do since the, uh, the opposition has returned. A junk ride just fell off the map trying to get to the high ground. But Salt uh, pins a Lunar and misses a Shatter because of Sea Dog blocking it. It's gonna have to force Drexel to back out. This is a 2 CP moment, rather, where the respawns come back really fast. Some real backyard Overwatch being played right now. That was. <laughs> I think that was incredible. Uh, you see a Drunkard falling off the map, you see a Reinhardt pinning a Lucio. You see. Roadhog trying to fish a May off the map. You see a Roadhog fishing again. Huge! There's there you the go. Bomb. There's the shatter you're bomb. talking about. What a fucking huge tire from Kenya coming outside. Going to manage to pick off two. Really well done. The tire, though, did bring bring back the fight. And that fight turning ultimate. It didn't He's kill Reinhardt, but it uh, did a lot of damage. That Lucio really uh, stifling the fishing that Magic Turtle is attempting to do. Uh, <laughs> not, not working out for him. I really like that. Uh, I really like Lunar sitting there. It's really, really smart thing to do. Although I would like it more if they just decided to clear that Roadhog out of that side like they're doing right now. Make sure that the fishing doesn't take place in the first place. Oh, oh but unwritten right. pops, even though using the uh, the window. But Sea Dog does get a fire strike kill through it, and then. Prime Cell gets a fire strike kill. Well, this is a. Uh, both teams Rupert. being able to uh, hold this third point really well despite the amount of time they have. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really odd, to be honest. I feel like third point. Uh, third point usually doesn't end this way, but uh, we're seeing it from both sides here. We're seeing some mind, good uh, old cycling, too. 
yeah, it's, the ultimate usage has actually been really well done during this scrim. Bree's gonna come out. Oh, here the comes side another of huge enemy. tire from another the side and gets the Lunar out. out. No immortality, no Lucio. A lot of value gonna be gotten wow. here. Everything is just been negated. Wow. Not uh, not sure if I agree with the shatter there. I feel like they had already won the fight, but uh, right. with two more ultimates coming online for the side of Prime, to, or not Prime Solid, rather Phoenix Claw, I uh, I can't be too mad. The uh, swaggy little shatter. We've got Sea Dog's shatter perfectly well online. Maybe another shatter bomb combo here if we can see it. That'll be really cool to see. Hopefully see a good beat here from Lunar to save their team or to engage really early on. Huge There's a shatter, it's a nice shatter. Not much follow up though. Maybe no yeah. thrusters from Ratgun. It would have been a really great opportunity to get a good amount of kills from the Diva Bomb. The Diva Bomb was an incredible. Ratgun does manage to find that Reaper out behind them. The window coming out, hopefully scaring a little bit of time for Drexel to the tire going to come out at the same time as Death Blossom. That's going to clean it up. It's going to be a very difficult uh, fight to come back from as Drexel simply pouring in. Z Dog was able to break that tire with the fire strike, but leaving them vulnerable to the uh, the death boss from behind. And Lunar is contesting the point now. for a second here, so hopefully these respawns could come back. Dude, it's gonna Lunar somehow the still alive. Yeah, Luna still alive. Now picked off. off now. Sea Dog on the monkey, trying to do as much as he can. I don't know if I would have opted for the monkey. Uh, probably would have gone with the ball. Monkey pops just a little too fast, and there he goes. And now here comes the damage. This is some incredible burst damage coming out from Nano Reaper. Yeah, Nano Reaper gonna clean things up rather quickly here. There goes Unwritten. Rackgun does manage to get the hog, but as they still trying to get a finish up the fight here. Maybe get a winning chance of the miracle. Could have to see Lunar a pick or two coming so in. <laughs> well done. There oh, goes here comes the bomb, oh. but it's not gonna matter. No contest. Got to make sure. You that have was a very best. good map. Absolutely. Really well played on both teams' uh, sides on that third point there. They rather got pretty well stomped on the first and uh, second points on both ends, but that second point was tight. Going to see Aerosmith's nice Reaper Blossom on the third point of King's Row here. Yeah, at the same time as a tire is just a lethal mm -hmm. combo. I mean, what are you? What are you gonna do? Yeah, you have Where to pick one to go? defend. There's no way you're living both of those ultimates. Yeah, really, really well done and coordinated, to be honest, on the side of uh, Phoenix Claw. And uh, as we wait here for our interviewee... I still do think it was interesting, though, how both teams capped the first two points so fast and then were able to have the defense being so long. Be looking at a Ryan Shatter here as well. Oh, this was Sea Dog's massive yeah. Shatter in the beginning. Yeah, that was an incredible fight turner. This map might have not turned out the way it did, to be honest, if Sea Dog didn't hit that incredible Shatter. And here's another one that lovely Shatter Bomb combo coming in. Really well coordinated, really well done stuff. Looks like Physics Armand is going to be our uh, interviewee for today. Just got to get him into the chat and we will eventually give uh, some questions for him. That was a very good scrim sesh overall, overall Rick. I mean, both teams, uh, while not winning every single map, where they're very even. And uh, the, I really loved watching that game. Uh, this session specifically. All right, I thought that was a very, uh, a very nice educational moment for Drexel too. I thought they, mm -hmm. uh, I thought there were a lot of key mistakes that were sort of made uh, at key times that can easily be rectified and give them the edge that they need. As we see, uh, physics coming in. Hey, what's going Hello. on? Hello, how Hi. you doing? Yeah, uh, we're doing all right. Pretty interesting games. So I think we're all. Uh... We've had some pretty highs in there, some few lows, so I think we're doing all right, though. I agree. I thought it was a pretty good educational scrim. Uh, a lot of, uh, as Monty and I were just saying, there were a lot of moments uh, where maybe some key mistakes were made, some key plays that probably could have gone a different way. 
uh, that we can learn from there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, at first, we're just uh, Drexel Team 3, going to be doing a scrim, found out Team 2 were down a few, and lo and behold, we just kind of merged the two into some weird team. So we were definitely not as coordinated as usual on either side, and there were a lot of mistakes that were came out of that. Individuals themselves, we had a few mistakes, but I think overall, as the game was going through, we were able to start identifying what was going wrong. We were able to start addressing some things. Some things, maybe like the junk, honestly, wasn't really addressed until the very end and the game ended. But other things we were able to slowly get through. And then eventually we had a sub on the tank with Sea Dog coming in. And uh, in the comms, at least, Sea Dog was able to like kind of rally us together a little more than when we were just kind of where we were before, I guess. Right, I did see Sea Dog's run. Pretty, uh, pretty powerful stuff, to be honest. I saw a lot of plays being made from the main tank position tonight. Honestly, did Sea Dog did an incredible job. What are yeah. your, uh, what are your thoughts to try and improve after this scrim playing against, to my view, essentially only a brawl team? Yeah, I think we're definitely, definitely going to be bot reviewing this. I think one of the biggest things we were having was a lot of the times we there was someone coming on the flank and we weren't properly knowing how to address it. Sometimes. We were all just yelling for our diva to address it. Sometimes our diva was already doing something else. And for example, one time our diva tried to deal with it and the hog was left open. So I think the biggest thing we needed was a little more coordination. If we're all on the same page, we would be able to properly address a lot of the problems. And especially in this brawl thing, like you mentioned, Sea Dog's Ryan is insane. And if we enable him, we're able to get a lot of value out of that. And a lot of the fights we won, we were able to just keep him alive, let him keep swinging. And he honestly just opened it up with some huge shatters. So I think going in, again, if we were to play this team again, playing mainly kind of rush and swapping in their kind of either poke or close range DPS, I think our goal is just enable our Rhine, take out, answer their DPS quicker. We were letting their DPS get away with a lot this game. So just answering quicker, being faster, being more coordinated. And I think we'd be able to take this. Absolutely. And we've got some uh we've got some replays for you to watch here in a moment if you want to join the stream that we've got going. Absolutely. First things first, we've got a, a nice shatter coming out here from Barry. Oh yeah. Very well done. Big shatter there. I mean the the Rhines today on our team were definitely just opening up fights for us, winning fights that we thought we might lose. They were really difference makers here. Oh uh, yeah, and here's the uh, the triple kill diva bomb. <laughs> yeah, that diva <laughs> bomb, amazing, wonderful job killing uh, three people out of position. That's what happens when you split apart during that brawl. Yeah, Rakko is doing fantastic on the uh, on diva today. Yeah, nice what place for Ben here? <laughs> nice little punch into traffic for that poor hamster. Yeah, our team three usual strategy is enable our tanks because they they honestly just win us these fights. It's great. Both Ratgun and Sea Dog and Barry today. Man, that Death Blossom on Ikenwall, I still can't get over it. Managing to kill six behind them. Nice little sim walk coming out from you here. Oh, wow, I got a play there. Okay, yeah. no complaints there, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, sim wall really enabling the team there. Death Blossom the next time coming around. Beninator ending the team fight there. And then, oh, here's Anubis there. I was very yeah. impressed by your Echo gameplay on uh, on Anubis. You're pretty much raining free and getting some easy picks with your focusing beam. Yeah, I was, I was the first kind of few maps we were playing, I was swapping off a lot of heroes. Some of them I don't commonly play as much when we're scrimming. And mm -hmm. I finally got a chance to help back on Echo, and Echo, some someone like I will play on my own in ranked, I'll play them when we scrim, so I was a lot more comfortable on Echo. I'm sure there's things to still improve, but I was definitely more happy playing Echo, especially, and I hope it showed. Absolutely. Uh, there's always improvement to be done, no matter how good you are at the game. And uh, it was definitely, uh, your Echo knowledge definitely was put on display there. This Diva Bomb, by the way. Uh, <laughs> there we go, man. That's what that I'm saying. Rat Gun here just... On D.Va, sometimes you didn't get to do it here, but sometimes on Sigma, just finding kills when we don't expect it to get that much. Nice eat by Rakan again. Rakan, you're putting in, a, putting in work, really. Your, your tank's really 
did oh, yeah. a lot. Oh yeah, they guys. really did. Yeah, I mean, you could just tell by this shadow right here. Uh, that was great. Uh, I see dog there. Oh yeah. Someone was calling. We're gonna head out, and Sea Dog was like, "I got this, guys!" And just goes in, shatters, and we're just like, "All right, should just trust Sea Dog." Yeah, that shatter bomb also, like that coordination was just really nice to see. Anyways, uh, thank you so much, uh, Physics. I appreciate your time, and uh, I hope you had a good time in the scrim today because I certainly enjoyed watching it. Yeah, thanks so much for casting, and yeah, it was lots of fun at the end of the day. There were so many moments where we were all just laughing, cheering, so thanks so much for uh, casting. Of course. Anything else from you, uh, Sponty? Uh, I wanted to note that I know this wasn't uh, the exact same team uh, from Drexel, since they had to bring up some Team 3 players due to uh, lack of Team 2 players. But I did notice that, I remember last week we were talking about their communication mistakes and shot calling. I think it was a little more well-rounded today, with like what Physics said, bringing in Sea Dog, and he, he rallied the team together a little better, keeping those elbows right. close together, playing rush comps, and uh, deciding whether to engage or back out and fight. So it was definitely much better than last week's scrim against uh, Olympus. I agree, team. sometimes it's all it takes. is just one shot caller to help you guys... Uh come together and make plays as a team rather than just acting like it's another game of the ranked ladder. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely seeing improvement on all levels. No, very well done. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Now Loading Esports. Fantastic scrim today between Drexel 2 and Phoenix Claw. Thank you to both teams for a wonderful performance. This has been myself, Big Rick, and Sponty. Mm -hmm.